Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat again, and uh, in this video I'm going to be covering the next steps in my Cinema 4D PC build, um, choosing my CPU and motherboard. So what is it that Cinema 4D needs from the CPU? Is it speed, i.e. Uh, clock frequency, or is it the amount of cores that um, a chip has? Well, <clears throat> it really depends on what you're going to be using Cinema 4D for. Most of uh, Cinema 4D's object manager tasks are single threaded uh, tasks like generators, deformers, um, expressions and animation. So a chip with a lot of cores is not going to do you much good if that's the only type of work you're doing. Um, so if you're purely doing that kind of thing, it might be get a, better to get a chip with a higher clock frequency. but and it is a big but. Um, if you're doing a lot of rendering, cores are gonna matter. Um, Cinema 4D is hugely multi-threaded in that area when it comes to rendering using the standard or physical render. And uh, I think even in, uh, there's an experimental feature in ProRender. So you're gonna want more, more cores. Now I do a mixture of both really. I mean, <clears throat> my scenes can get pretty heavy, but after I've built whatever I'm building, I want to be able to render it out and I'd like it to be quite snappy as well. So I went and bought myself one of these. This is the uh, Threadripper 1950X. It has 16 cores, that's 32 threads. So when you, um, when you look in your task manager at your CPU, you should see 32 logical cores there. I can't wait to see that, that's going to be really good. Um, the base clock for this thing is, uh, I think it's 3.4 gigahertz, which doesn't seem massively fast, but um, you can overclock this to uh, 4 gigahertz, which is what I'll be doing, which is why I'm, I'm uh, going down the road of uh, doing water cooling for my build. It also supports um, quad channel RAM, so quad channel memory there. Um, so I think uh, we're going to be looking into that as well for our RAM at a later stage. So that's our CPU dealt with. Um, like I said, it depends what you're going to be doing. Um, I see a lot of gamers actually sort of go, oh, I'm going to get the best chip for my machine. And, you know, they can go out and spend this, you know, spend money on a chip like this, but it's going to do them no favours whatsoever. Most games are a single threaded. Most games are dealt with on a single thread. So this buying this would be absolutely pointless. Um, it would just be throwing money down the drain. Uh, what they really want to do is probably concentrate on their graphics card or and more RAM. But, um, but for purposes of rendering, if you do a lot of rendering, something like this is really going to um, help you out. In terms of price as well, this thing's pretty good. Uh, I think Intel's closest offering in terms of performance to this is double the price. So it's nice to see uh, AMD back in the game when it comes to chips. Okay then, on to the um, motherboard. My only requirements really were that um, obviously it could house my chip, so the TR4 socket, and um, that it be an Asus board. My current board is an Asus board and I've never had a problem with it. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, I really like the um, flashback BIOS update feature on it, so you could Put USB in the back, hold a button down with the computer off, it'd flash, update your BIOS, it'd flash again to let you know it's done and then you just boot back up again. I thought that was really good, um, really enjoyed that. Um, so I went to Asus's site and they offered three boards um, for this socket, for this chipset. Uh, there was the Asus Prime um, X399A and one up from that was the ROG uh, Strix, and then there was the Zenith Extreme at the top. Now, the Zenith Extreme, um, you know, the board cost 550 quid, something like that. Um, and I So I compared all three, basically, and I ended up going with the Prime. Um, here it is, in all its glory. It does everything that I need it to do, and then some, actually. Um, and in comparison to uh, the ROG Strix, it's it's basically the same um, in terms of features 
uh, apart from a few little things. I think that this lacked Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and I absolutely don't care about any of that whatsoever. Wi-Fi, I'm hardlined in. I won't have anything else. And Bluetooth, again, I've got nothing to, to connect to. I mean, I've got a Bluetooth stereo in there, and I'll just use my Surface for music and stuff. So I had absolutely no use for those two things. So I thought, why pay through the nose? Um, for that so this board will absolutely do me fine um, so I'm just going to go through some of the stuff that it's got on there obviously it's got eight dim slots because um, it's got a well it supports quad channel RAM for starters but it will uh, take 128 gig of DDR4 RAM uh, overclocked up to uh, 3600 megahertz um, and I'll be talking about my RAM in a minute uh, oh, the other difference is this has um, SLI support for I think it's three-way SLI whereas the Asus Extreme the Zenith Extreme supports four-way SLI now with the way prices are at the moment for graphics cards because of those lovely Bitcoin miners um, I won't be buying four cards in the near future. Uh, so, in fact, I won't be buying any cards. I'll be taking my current cards. I've got two GTX 970s out of my current build, and I'll be putting those in this build for now. Um, in fact, the price of my two cards now are way more expensive than it was when I bought them brand new. Um, pro graphics card prices are absolutely insane at the moment so yeah I'll be holding off on that um, for as long as I can probably um, it's madness it's absolute madness anyway I digress onto storage it's got two m.2 sockets if you don't know what m m.2 is it's basically a souped up SSD um, storage memory very 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 fast read and write speed so um check out m.2 it's worth having a look at i will be adding that at some point but um that'll be down the road um in terms of audio it's got quite a lot of features not that i really care about it to be honest because i've just got a couple of bose pc speakers stereo speakers plugged in so as long as it's got uh you know a slot for that at the back which most well all boards do it's not a problem um, in terms of USB ports, it's got just as many as my uh, other one, but these are all, um, I think it's got eight USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and that they're at the back. And then it's got uh, a Gen 2 3.1 USB port as well. Then we've got four, four USB 3.1 Gen 1s, uh, four at mid-board, so those will be the ones that are connected to the, um, the front panel and that kind of thing. Um, and then it's got four 2.0 at mid-board. It's got two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, um, Type-A and USB Type-C as well. So there's plenty of connect connections there um, in terms of USB anyway. Uh, <laughs> it also has uh, Aura RGB strip headers. So this thing is covered in headers um, all across the board. So anything that's RGB lit can be um, plugged in. Uh, plenty of um, uh, connect, uh, connections for fans as well. And obviously you get the Asus Fan Expert as well. So you can control your fans using that. So basically you say when my CPU gets to a certain temp, you you ramp all these um, fans up to a certain RPM. So you can really control and hone uh, your cooling, which is um, absolutely great. Again, they've... Inc uh, They've got the flash, uh, easy flash, which is what I was talking about earlier about uh, flashing the BIOS, nice and easy. So the BIOS flashback and all that stuff on there. Um, I think there's actually RGBs on the board as well. So <clears throat> um, yeah, I think certain aspects of this light up. Yeah, I think there's like a, a heat shield for the M.2 that lights up from underneath. So again, something I'm, I'm not too bothered about. I just want the pure 
performance um, of this stuff. Anyway, I'll put, I'll put a link up to uh, this board so you can check it out uh, yourself and go, you know, pour over the details. One more thing about this, this isn't just an ATX board, this is an EATX, so an extended ATX board, which is good for me because um, my case is definitely large enough to house, house it. So there's not gonna be any problems there in terms of room. Okay, so that's my motherboard dealt with. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, the RAM that I've chosen to uh, stick in this little bad boy. After a lot of digging around about the chip um, and what it plays nice with in terms of memory, in terms of, in terms of random access memory, um, I ended up going with this bad boy. It's the G Skill Trident Z RAM. And it's also RGB as well, so once you plug this in, it will light up like Christmas. Um, now, the reason I chose this stuff is because after sort of like digging around forums and whatnot, because this chip does support quad channel RAM, um, I decided to buy 32 gig of quad channel RAM. Now, initially what I thought I'd do is, I thought, well, why don't I just buy 16 gig, so two eight sticks, and then further down the road, buy another two uh, eight gigabyte sticks, and then I can have quad channel RAM. And after a little bit of digging, uh, I found that it doesn't quite work like that. Um, there's something to do with the manufacturing process where these have to be in a serialized way or something like that. And um, so I just bought all four at the same time. So, you know, coming out of the factory, these four sticks are you know, sequential, they work together, and all the rest of it. Uh, another important thing that I was reading about is um, a Samsung B die. Uh, apparently the Threadripper loves this stuff and um, eats it up. So I thought, well, you can't go wrong with this stuff, really. Um, so that's what, what I went for, for the RAM. Um, it's 3200 megahertz. And it's got a latency of, I think it's C14. Yeah, C14. So 32 gig, C14 latency, and 3200. The board and the chip actually will handle up to 3600, but there may be more latency, I think. So, but from digging around the internet, um, I found that 3200 uh, C14 was the best way to go. So that's what I did. So that's my uh, motherboard and RAM and uh, my CPU. So it's all coming together now. Um, in my next video, I'm going to be talking about, um, I'm going to be moving on to the water cooling stuff, I think. Bear with me. Yeah, yeah, that's the only stuff left now. Um, so I'm going to be covering uh, the water block because this chip, this this Threadripper chip, is huge. It's a big boy. Um, so I needed to find a water block that will actually cover, you know, get some decent coverage on it and make sure that, that you know, the dye underneath, all, the dyes underneath are, are actually cooled correctly. Because if I'm overclocking my chip for the purposes of rendering, I definitely want to make sure that I don't fry it. So I'm probably going to run it at base clock speeds for a bit. Um, just to make sure everything's hunky-dory and then start cranking it up. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be looking at my water block. I'll be looking at my <clears throat> radiator as well that's going in this. And also the pump as well. I've got a pump for the coolant. Uh, I'm gonna, that's another thing. I'll be going over the coolant and the do's and don'ts as well. You know, stuff like galvanic corrosion in a custom water loop. Something I knew nothing about until I started looking into this. Uh, and also the type of tubing as well. Um, this is something that surprised me. Um, again, after digging digging into this and getting some great advice actually from uh, the Overclockers Overclockers UK forum uh, in their water loop section, I got some great help from some great people there. Um, but uh, I didn't know that flexible tubing has actually got a plasticizer in it, and that's what makes it bendy, bendy and soft. Um, so that actually can leak into your coolant over time. So um, 
I did a bit of digging about that, and I think I found a way to get around it. So I'll be talking about that in my next uh, video. Anyway, as always, guys, um, thanks for listening. You can check me out on digitalmeat.uk. You can follow me on social media on Facebook and um, Google Plus and uh, Twitter. There'll be links for that and in the description. And uh, if you want to help us keep going, um, there'll be a Patreon link at the end of the video. Cheers for listening, guys. Bye. Bye.